Hello everybody, I am Udo Weilacher. I am Professor for Landscape Architecture and Transformation at the Technical University of Munich in Germany. I am really very pleased to have the opportunity today to present to you the projects of our students in landscape design. And I would also like to talk a little bit about the landscape perspective and how we integrate research and design as epistemological tools in our teaching. Before doing this, of course, I need to talk a little bit about a key term in our profession, the term landscape, and how we understand what landscape is all about. So let's take a quick look at that. The term landscape, how we use it here in our design studios, is pretty much based on the definition by John Brinkhoff Jackson from 1984. He pointed out that a landscape is not a natural feature of the environment, but a synthetic space, a man-made system of spaces superimposed on the face of the land. This is very important because for us, a landscape is not purely a natural feature, but landscape is dealt with as this system of spaces. And for the students, this means they have to look at the landscape from a holistic point of view, not differentiating between the natural features and the so-called um, artificial features. Just to show you a little bit what the core competences in landscape architecture are here at TUM, I have the honor and pleasure to cooperate with professors like Regine Keller, Sören Schöbel and Ferdinand Ludwig. Um, and they are dealing with open spaces, regional spaces and green technologies, which means the students have the opportunity to choose from all these different aspects. And this is responsible for the profile of the education of our students here. The students have the opportunity to study here in the Bachelor of Science. This is an eight semester program with an uh, obligatory international semester abroad in the fifth semester. We're trying to make our students fit for international cooperation. That's why they have to do an external international internship. After eight semesters and doing their bachelor thesis, they can continue with the Master of Arts. In the Master of Arts, 50% of the program is dominated by the studio works and this is obligatory but the rest of the program the students are very free to choose from a broad variety of subjects to sort of develop their own specific profile for external international students the program is um, four semesters now looking at the characteristics of my chair of landscape architecture and transformation we essentially deal with uh, following aspects. We're dealing with the transformation of industrial landscapes, for example, alpine industrial landscapes, but actually these days we're dealing with the transformation of all kinds of different landscapes. So we're not focusing on industrial landscapes alone. We're also dealing with history and theory of landscape architecture because I strongly believe that this knowledge is essential for uh, future landscape architecture performance. And we're also dealing with the interface between landscape architecture and the visual arts because the art approach in landscape architecture is creating a kind of knowledge which is absolutely essential for the new development of landscape architecture. Now this is very interesting here because it shows the program at my chair of landscape architecture and transformation and it shows a little bit how we link teaching and research activities. Very roughly in the red box you can see all our teaching activities which are studios and the bachelor and the master, seminars, lectures and we also have a model shop. In the blue box, you can see the research activities composed of publications, dissertations and all kinds of corporations. Now, the teaching is not only the studio teaching, it's not only freehand drawing and sketch problems, but we're also doing something like the so-called scientific writing lab, because scientific writing for the students is not only important for developing their profile for later academic career, but writing also is a great tool to teach design strategies and logic design concept, concepts. Of course, there's also lectures on theory and history of landscape architecture because this is the basis for successful design. This is all overlapped basically by our research activities, which means we're trying to include the students as much as possible in research programs. Um, so the students have the opportunity to see how research is running. They also have the opportunity to actually participate in research activities and gain very important knowledge for their future career. 
For example, this is a project here in the EU project uh, trails, transformation of alpine industrial landscapes. It's a former cement mill that had to be transformed. This was part of a research project. But we took also our students to the site. We had an excursion to Sor Borgo San Dalmazzo. We did some classical inventive analysis on the site, understanding what the site really is all about. And we had very intensive discussions with local stakeholders. Back in the studio, the project processing and consulting in teams was taking place. The results were not only plans and models, but the students had to reflect thoroughly on their design process. And that's why they write a very detailed project report. Model building, of course, is very important to understand the three-dimensional consequences of design in the space. Presenting the projects is part of the education program as well. Here we have presentation with guest critics, Silvia Benedito from Harvard University or Peter Lutz are just two of many guest critics that we have all the time to sort of give the students a feedback uh, from different perspectives. But we also have the students present their projects in front of the stakeholders on the location in Borg of San Dalmazzo, a very rewarding experience for the students to see how their projects were taken um, into the discussion on, in, on the site itself and in the community. This is just one example of such a project that the students produced. And I would like to point out on the right hand side, the project report with 55 pages where the students really reflect on the theoretical background of their project. They explain the concept of their background. They formulate their hypothesis. So this is a substantial part of the design process. It's not only the plans, the perspectives and the model, but also the project report. But now let's look at the project that was handed in by Vincent Wenck, a bachelor thesis from 2022. Vincent Wenck focused on a project here in Berlin, Moabit. It's a thermal power plant that was out of use. The energy transition and the withdrawal from energy generation with hard coal and lignite raise, of course, the question how industrial infrastructures should be dealt with in the future. Previous plans suggest energetic and cultural conversions or a complete dismantling of the sites. But uh, Vincent Wenck here chose another strategy. He was turning this power plant into an experimental space for future development by focusing on um, spatially and programmatically new strategies here. So he was dealing with the question, how can we use this power plant to create new knowledge in the community? And how can we use the different components without really a fixed program, but with spaces that could be developed over time? So what you can see here in this project is that he was transforming the site in Berlin into a learning and ex experimentation field. He not only changed some architectonic strategies here, but he also redesigned these areas into uh, experimentation field right next to the river. In the perspectives, you can see his ideas of how this whole project should become a learning and a community space. So the social aspect, the ecological aspect, and of course, economic aspects were taken into consideration. At the end of the project, he designed a project report of 90 pages, explaining pretty clearly his theory behind this whole project. The theory that the spaces have to be reused in order to create social value and economical value, but also ecological value. And as I said, instead of developing a fixed master plan, the project implements a strong open planning structure and multiple coded and flexible rooms that can react spatially and programmatically, not only to today's, but also to future ecological and social challenges of the 21st century. The project by Bernadette Brandl was a master thesis from 2019. She was dealing with the former refactory works of the Styrian magnesite industries in Leuven in Austria. The traditional strategy is to tear down these old industrial sites. We're in the middle of the Alps, right next to a, a wonderful river landscape. And the idea was to transform this place into a social development project, a project that can grow over time, a project that is not only dealing with nice images, but also converts the former um, uh, site into a community center, which will add social value to the uh, community here. 
What you can see here is how the student converted not only the trails along the uh, and the rails along the uh, site right next to the Moor River, but um, what's more important as a background of the project is the fact that she transformed the spaces into really a community space which will be extremely valuable for the future development of the city of Leoben. So we have like market activities, we have social activities, you know, there's orchard for fruit growing, there are meadows, walking and cycling activities that can happen here. And it shows that the student has a very great understanding of this landscape idea, a landscape as a system of spaces. So, so she, of course, uh, combined the spaces of the interior program with the exterior program and produced a 137 uh, pages project report where she very clearly focused on her research approach on the site and showed her capabilities of scientific approach to these complex problems. Another very complex problem was uh, the project that Xiao Zhen Li dealt with. She's currently a PhD student at the TUM and she actually is doing in her PhD exactly the same work or enlarging the work that she did in her project here for this uh, Breaking the Island, a project in Karlskrona in Sweden. In Karlskrona in Sweden, um, the idea was, or the problem was, the project was that it, uh, there was a former oil harbor in Karlskrona and this oil harbor had to be sort of redeveloped again. And you can see here how the student focused really on the question, how did the landscape develop over the history of time? How do we deal with the sea level water rise questions? And how can we redevelop the site to become something of ecological, economical and social value? Um, she also formulated what you can see here on the right hand side, a hypothesis. This is pretty typical for our students that they have to formulate a hypothesis and sort of stating what a possible solution for the site will be. Hypothesis is a strategy that's also used in research and that's why we spent quite an energy on this kind of uh, approach. And she was also dealing with the theory of structuralism. So you can see that this is a research-based approach and not only a design project that is producing formal answers to spatial questions. You can see here the design principles that she was dealing with. Um, and she developed a project which is really um, very, very interesting from different points of view, especially from the question of climate adaptation. Again, she also published a project report with 123 pages discussing the theories that she was dealing with and uh, pointing out the future uh, possibilities for the site. The last project I'd like to show you is by Amy Neff um, in uh, South Africa. Amy was dealing with a complex situation here at uh, the shoreline near Naisna in South Africa. You can see it's a very, very complex situation of estuaries and water bodies and uh, the development of the town was not really in tune with the environmental situation. So the student not only was dealing with urban planning and landscape design, but she also was asking herself, how can we integrate this whole project into a more complex and process oriented strategy? Again, she formulated um, a hypothesis for this project. She was developing a strategy to deal with the climate change effects, sea level water rise. So she redesigned the whole site. She sort of drew back the harbor area and she made sure that there is a close interconnection between the ecological, social and economic values in this kind of project. Some details show very clearly how she is trying to reorganize not only the functional aspect, but also the ecological aspects on the right hand side. And it was, of course, also her duty to produce a project report. And in this project report, she really very clearly um, defines how complex this project is. She shows very clearly her landscape based strategy to design a resilient future for Naisna shoreline. Well, if we look at the epistemological methods and tool in design teaching, I'd like to point out a few points. I will not touch on all of them because we don't have that much time. But number one, it's very important for us to, to, to couple the research and initiatives and the design project and to create synergies.
We also combine in our teaching classical, scientific and creative inventive analysis methods to give the students a broad view of what their environment is all about. Very important for this approach is critical reflection. Critical reflection of, for example, generated analysis data and classical research strategies. The students have to formulate and permanently question the design hypothesis based on problems first. So tell me what the problem is and then begin with your design. Um, but the problem has to be formulated very, very clearly. Hypothesis-based co-design process in interdisciplinary and international groups is very important for this kind of crossover activities. Of course, we focus on landscape-based design approach and we consider the urban landscape just a well, a special type of landscape. So actually our students are dealing in the same way to deal with the natural landscape, also with urban landscape. And urban and landscape design is sort of melting together. You might want to call this a um, landscape design that is um, a little bit based on landscape or urbanism. We have an emphasis on process-oriented design strategies to solve complex problems. So it's not so much about the product, but it's about the process, which is, of course, difficult to show on the plans, actually. But it's described very nicely in the reports that I just uh, touched at. We want our students to critically reflect on the design-generated knowledge, which means research through design is for us something very important because we strongly believe that by design we create a kind of knowledge which cannot be created with the strategic or the classical methods in research. The theory-driven critical reflection of design solutions is also pointed out in written reports. And last not least, the critical evaluation of design solutions by practitioners and researchers and kind of a quality management is an important point for our teaching here at the Technical University of Munich. This is how we try, in a nutshell, to make our students fit for the future. Well, at the end of this tour, I hope you got a little bit more curious about how we teach landscape architecture at the Technical University of Munich. If you should have any questions, please feel free to contact me anytime. But I hope you understood how important it is for us to integrate research and design as really important epistemological tools in teaching and how we sort of try to make the students fit for the future because this future is for them, for all of us, quite a challenge.